Greetings. Love them knives. Tepe Designs. Tepe Designs. Sean has outdone himself once again. Look at this hollow grind in here going up to this flat grind. And, of course, of course, you know how he rolls. M390, 049, so they're numbered, right? They're numbered. And then it's titanium, right? And at first I thought, oh, this is just that storm anno on a piece of titanium, you know, kind of makes it look like Timascus. No, no, this is Timascus, okay? And there's backspacer here. And nice little lanyard hole, titanium pocket clip, all kinds of crazy. Except, you see the frame lock? You can't even see it. It's invisible. It's in stealth mode. You can take it out of stealth mode by just moving the... I'm kidding. Okay. Now, it's a liner. Ah, not a liner. Well, if it's a liner, then it needs to have a hardened steel insert. Yeah, it kind of looks like it does. Except, you know what? Hold on. Nah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no. Nah. It's not a titanium liner. It's a steel liner. So, no, it doesn't need a steel insert. <sighs> what do you think about that? Ooh, baby. You think they got that carved out? Look at the cavern up there. Wow. The 172. This is a, a little bit different of a jazz thing for Tepe even. But, I mean, he has... Oh, my God. I got to put uh, my favorites. Oh, my God. And I'll put them down here because it's not the 138, is it? It's the 23. I can't remember. But, I mean, you know what? You know what? And I'm not going to do it now. I'm not going to do it now. But I need to... Because... My okay, my section of the drawer that I got two sun knives in has overflowed and overflowed into another drawer. And I need to pull them out and I need to kind of go through them. And actually, I need to thin my collection. But before I do that, I need to put them on my channel and just show you, you know, what I have kept of the two sun knives. How many have come through in the last? seven years you know i was just i remember when they first started coming out right um, they weren't that much different except the two sun thing was on just box they didn't have this slip cover thing God dang it come here they didn't have this slip cover thing they just had it written on here right and they of course this is this is came from white mountain knives because they actually put the identifier on here, okay? But you know what? Now Tucson is doing it too. TS-172, that kind of thing. Like, ooh, over this little dog, which I'm going to talk about in not too distant future. Whew. Talk about dog. This is a long side. 434. 434 T2. Be there. Be square. Look at that. Oh, you can just flip this clip. Look at that by this little thing sticking out here. But, whew. oh, you want to get a little size comparison? Yikes. Yikes. And this one is a full-size knife. This one is a Mongo knife. And it's really inexpensive, too. This one, not so much. And you know why? I don't know. It's got M390 Titanium Timascus. Okay, I mean, any if you took this off of there and you just go, some guy jazzed out, hey, I'm having Riot make these in China and I'm a, you know, new designer here in the U.S., pre-orders only, you'd be paying what, three, three fifty, right? Put Tucson on it, that devalues it. It's worth about what, thirty-five bucks then all of a sudden. I mean, it's. It makes me laugh. It makes me laugh. It's sad. $149.99. Now they're out of stock at White Mountain Knives, and I don't know when they're coming back in. But, uh, uh, wow. Yeah. I, I like his design language. And he made, he did the Shockwave. Wasn't it the 134 Shockwave? I've still got that one as well. 
but he's done, and he's done the 134 in wooden handles with the lower end steel than the M39 and that kind of thing. Okay, here's this. 7.8 inches. This is, you know, blade length, they're saying 3 inches. Now, come on. Is it 8 inches with a 3-inch blade? There's no way. There is no way Tepe design. Okay, fuck. Nah, that's, that's BS. That is BS. Well, may, maybe cutting edge. Well, yeah, cutting edge. Otherwise, it's 3.35. Can you see that, or am I holding it just so I can enjoy the, this video? Um, yeah, 3.35. So now it's not three and a half, depending on where you want. You want to bring it back to the bolster rack down here? Yeah, it is. Is it 7.8? Yeah, I guess. I guess. Um, coming up really close to 20 centimeters. 19.8, whatever, something like that. But that is nice. Oh, by the way, it's just all of a sudden occurred to me. Maybe I could cut something with it. Oh, let's see where we are. Okay. Okay, we don't start in the choil area. There's no sharpening there. Okay. All right, yeah, I mean, that hollow grind. Oh, we just tore that one away. Okay, there we go. Yeah, pretty nice. Pretty nice satin grind in there. What's that? Like, yeah, pretty symmetrical as well. Lock up, nothing to brag about, is it? Woo, I don't trust you. You know what? I guess it is, but it ain't much, is it? You could always, you know, I've done this before, like taking a diamond stone from my KME, and then I've taken that liner out, and then take the stone right at the very end of that and go up and down, take a, take a few passes on the end of that lock bar and then it will you know because you're taking some material off so now it'll migrate over so if you want it to be at 35 to 40 percent you can take it apart take that out the problem is you don't want to do too many passes or it might mag migrate further than you wanted so then you got to put it all back together see where it is oop not enough take it all back apart but you can do that you can do that i've done that before drove myself crazy but you can do that and it actually works so uh you know over the detent ball pretty nice yes this little cutaway here you can finger flick this like that okay gotta get your finger there first like that okay and flipper tap pretty muted i mean not really it's not like a sail and it's got jimping on it. Yeah, and it's really light switch. Yeah, uh, not really going to work as a push button because of that, right? But more light switch-ish. Uh, but you can jump right up in here. I just think it's very unusual. This blade is kind of cool as well. Um, still, uh, the shock wave, and then the, I can't remember, it's a 138, 238, what the hell it is, the I like better still, um, but this one is pretty cool, by the way, and you know what, under $150, pretty good little deal there, and we got a little bit of lock stick there, little bit it comes and goes comes and goes what do we got here now well, the hardware looks all right looks pretty straightforward here looks like a number eight even in the pocket clip and not a lot going on there is there you got this this and this okay now have you got enough room for four feet yeah 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 and it's pretty comfortable actually um and there's enough of a pass through here Whew, i mean plenty right disengage that not a problem 
click over the detent. Yeah. And maybe a little tight. I mean, it's not, you know, I mean, you got to kind of coax it a little bit to get it to drop. No blade play lock rock, any of that. Not like I've done a lot with it, pretty much. I didn't really want to mess with it too much before I put it on my channel. And yet, I've had it sitting here for several months. <sighs> Probably since Blade West. God only knows, you know. And one guy's messaging me going, you give up doing uh, Tucson reviews now? Nah, it's just a lot of other knives out there doing this and that. And, uh, but no, I'm trying, you know, and then when I got that message, I was going, you know what? It has been a while since I looked at what White Mountain Knives has, because they've got them and you can get 10% off LTK discount code, that kind of thing. Okay. So what would this have been? Not 150, what, 135, something like that. And then and or bid on them. And I've got one coming from China I bid on um, on the eBay thing. And so I use my little my little sniper software to snipe the thing at the very end. And I usually lose, okay? But every once in a while I'll win. But they, they've got some fascinating designs out there. But what do you think about this little Timascus uh, strip across here? I thought that was kind of interesting that he would do that. So let's let's kick this apart and kind of take a look, see what's going on. And it shouldn't be too difficult. There's just not a lot of hardware there, is there? And I don't know that there's any number sixes involved here. Ooh, baby. We gonna get to go? Yeah. Okay, there we go. There's that. Um, you know what? Here's this. Let me see. What do we got? Oh, see, we're anchored down. Um, well. Okay. We got screws under here. Okay, probably because of that uh lock bar that's anchored under there. Okay. Let's pull this out. Okay, now we can probably take this dog apart. I think what would be holding it? Um, nothing that I can think of right off the bat. Here we go. Oop, throwing everything out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now are you going to let go finally? Okay, there we go. So these little screws are holding this lock bar in. And then what do we got on the other side? Nothing except a cavernous area where they have done a lot of weight reducing. Big time, big time. Oh, this fell out from this side, didn't it? Dog, like that. Okay, something like that. And then these little Timascus inserts are held in through here. So you could take a number six if you wanted to and pop those Timascus inserts out and then you could anodize and you could put it back in if you wanted to. And then there's the stop. There's a captured pivot here. Okay. So is it captured on this side? Yeah, it's captured on this side here. And then there's your little... There's your little, ooh, well, that's kind of a thick little washer, isn't it? Okay, okay. Right there, so ceramic bearings, all that. Boom, bang, like that. And then, of course, this here, yeah, is steel. And so not overly complicated, actually, although there's no left-hand you know, option for pocket clip, you, as you can see. So that's pretty much the disassembly. Bam. Here we go. Uh, you know what? Now my lock stick is gone. No, that's good. Whatever. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. But yeah, it's a nice action on it. You know, it didn't say Tucson. It's doomed. It's like being on the 
cover of SI Sports Illustrated, right? You go, oh, there's a guy. He's going to lose the next three games as a quarterback, right? <laughs> but two Sun Knives, they make some really cool stuff. And there's a lot of guys that have messaged me and said, you know, you're the one that got me into Tucson, and I don't know if I should love you or hate you because it's cost me a lot of money. And uh, so I'm very ambivalent about the whole thing, <laughs> but I love the Tucson knives. So here it is, another one for your consideration, the 172 M390. I've got number 49. Isn't it good? Yes, it is. Tepe Designs, you like the guy? You'll like the knife? You like the knife? You'll, I know you'll like the guy because I met him. He's a great guy. So, love them knives. Yes, we do. You guys, stay sharp.